Welcome, everybody, to episode number 34 of the Still City Insider podcast. And it is a special day today because we have Craig Wolfley with us, Steelers color analyst, former Steelers offensive lineman. Wolf, how are you doing today? And Jim, I didn't forget about you. How are you today? No, it's okay. Let's 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 talk about Wolf's comeback attempt. Well, first of all, the comeback ended when I broke a tooth on a chicken wing, which is why I messed up your, your schedule. And then, and think about this, and I want you guys to realize this. For 11 of my 12 years, I didn't even play with a mouth guard, but a lousy chicken wing takes me down. Are you kidding me? Nothing in, in over that, 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 that 12 years, but a chicken wing takes out the tooth of the kid here. Wow. Wow. Well, the other thing I want to bring up, too, from uh, training camp was – the the battle with the skunk whenever we were uh you know waiting to get on the bus to go to friday night lights you handle that skunk pretty well everyone said i turned tail and ran i was doing battle with the skunk i was not skunkified the skunk was about to be skunkified and then he moved off finally we were had a little ebb and flow in our epic battle that never really resulted in any sort of fisticuffs thankfully because i think i would have come out the worst for the wear on that one <laughs> but remember who the kid came back for came back for my buddies after i got the car in that deluge and i dropped people off at their cars everybody laughed at my expense okay you know but still i came back for my buddies well I, I tell you that was humbling brother I, we we were laughing we were mocking we, we <laughs> were derisive we were we didn't even care that you were afraid of the lightning we we didn't even take your courage into effect uh, and how courageous you were to <laughs> cross that field with the lightning in the area, knowing your family history and then battling the skunk. It was just too funny. We were laughing at you. And then you came back and picked us up and gave us a ride. You know, I, I, I put that story together and I, uh, it's going to be in the next Steelers digest, brother. <laughs> I, I, I wrote it and Labriola loved it. So. Awesome. Hey, you know what? It made for a good story. All I know is at least I didn't get skunkified. That would have been bad. Yeah, if I got hosed there, that that would have been, it, it takes the fun out of it. Awesome. What a what a great, great story that was. And we're gonna jump right in here. Again, the Steelers just wrapped up their second preseason contest on Saturday with a 16 to 15 victory over the Jacksonville Jaguars. And the big talk, I mean, there's a lot of things that, that we're gonna talk about today, but the quarterback position, the battle continues on, and especially now with Kenny Pickett having two consecutive solid games. Don't know if he's done enough to challenge for that starting role and really looking, Wolf, Jim, your perspective on this quarterback battle. Go ahead, Wolf. Well, the way I view this is, look, I think they already decided it's going to be Mitch Trubisky. I think they're going to stick with the plan. All right, and I thought Mitch did a good job of, making hay while the sun was barely shining in some of those passing situations he found himself in, you know, just the other night in Jacksonville. There was a lot of running around, getting himself loose. Um, but he's, he maintained what he needed to do and, and, and did some decent stuff, given the fact that it's really hard to evaluate when you're running for your life, Mike Tomlin said. The other thing I'll say is this. All three quarterbacks have shown composure. Well, that's one of the things you want in the huddle, the ability to stay composed under pressure. Then you have uh, the, the other thing I like about Kenny Pickett is the fact that he talked about he needed to throw guys open after the first game with Seattle. So what's he do? He works all week, then he comes along in the game, and bam, you see him hit Deontay Johnson on that slant route. And but for a trip, to, you know, a little ankle grabber getting him, he might have taken him to the house. You yeah. saw him with, uh, you know, the 24-yard or two, uh, the Muth, right? The Muth is on the Luth, and he took that 24 <laughs> yards, and he was getting along, and, and I thought, you know, that's a great job. He talked about it, and he and he did it. He actually, in one week's time, turned around and started to throw these guys open a little bit, which I thought was very mature on Kenny's part. And, of course, we saw Mason do what Mason's been doing the entire time in camp. That's being a highly competent professional quarter, quarterback and leading those guys, a lot of third-teamers, to, uh, you know, a, a game winner at the end. I, I think um, all of us in this uh, internet race, arms race, clickbait race, are trying to nail this entire thing down, trade this guy, start this guy, when does this guy play, how many snaps, what, what, where is he on the depth chart, when 
uh, the important thing is they found a quarterback. They found a quarterback. Yeah. This kid looks like the real deal. And it, it's not that easy. He was the 20th pick. That just doesn't happen. It doesn't happen with the 10th pick, Devin. It, it just, it, especially at this position, it, it's, it's, it should be a relief to everybody. And I know the coaching staff and personnel departments can act like, yeah, we knew, we knew, but it just, you don't know at that position. And it looks like they found a guy. The last time they had to wait 21 years. Wolf, you blocked for most of those guys. Uh, (laughs) It looks like, it looks like they found one right away. No matter when he plays, where he plays, uh, he he is going to be a ball player. He's going to be a quarterback. Yeah. So safe to say, Trubisky, he's going to start the season. He's going to be given every opportunity to lead his team. Kenny looks to be that number two guy. So where does that leave Mason Rudolph? Um, you know, I've, I've speculated. <laughs> you that can't he... help yourself, can you? <laughs> I, I can't. I can't. Who cares? I mean, he's a third string quarterback. He he, he could pro- possibly, uh, you know, an argument could be made that he could be the one quarterback over Trubisky. Mm-hmm. Uh, they have a kid quarterback. I mean, Mason is, uh, yeah, I assume now he's going to be the third quarterback. So yeah. it, it seems to be the way they're, they're going about this, you know, and I, I, let me just say this. I, I salute Mason Mason with through this whole thing has been nothing but supremely professional. The guy has been, you know, I thought he's really shown himself to be a true leader, a guy who uh, I, I got to tell you something mentally you think about, you know, that's a lot of pressure and this and that. He, he's just been terrific. I thought he is one of these guys that uh, psychologically, he, he is a tough guy. He's tougher than woodpecker lips uh, in the gourd, man, because I'll tell you what, you look at his, his production all through camp and everything else. Most teams would say that's the number one guy, but you know, the Steelers have plans. They got, you know, w- with Kenny and with, uh, with Mitch, and you know the fact is, it's is this is the way it's going to roll out. But I salute Mason because he has not given up, and he has not gone quietly. He has fought his butt off. Yeah, and it may not matter if they can't get that offensive line uh, to improve here in the next couple of weeks before the season kicks off. Saturday night, really just a, a challenging evening for the entire unit. I think the only name that didn't stand out as as not having a good performance was Mason Cole but from Dan Moore to Kendrick Green Kevin Dotson even James Daniels uh Chooks um just just below below the line play is this an anomaly was that game an anomaly or is this indicative of maybe a deeper issue that rests with this unit well, right now, it's, it's in my mind, just looking at what's going on right now, it was a step back from the week before. They rushed for over 100 yards the week before, and, and things were going well, and they took a step back. Now, when I look at it, and I watched the film yesterday, I spent all, all day yesterday just watching film. Chooks, had, he handled the pass pro fairly well. Yeah, Chooks uh, looked good. I, I, yeah, I thought with Chooks, he was, he was fine. The pressure didn't come through Chooks. Danny Moore was uncharacteristically – giving his man, Arden Key, a little too much room on the edge, and he took a couple of shots there, and it sent him on his heels. And I don't understand what what it was, but, you know, you get these bugaboos every now and then. You can have a, a game where you're just not, you know, your normal self. It's kind of like you get out there, and I can't explain it to you enough, but you're out there, and and everything you do seems to be out of body experience. You like feel like, that, what, what's happening? I'm not getting it done. I'm not doing it. And Danny Moore looked to me as a guy right then. He got a little unsettled in his technique, and he kept catching. He needs to punch. He needs to get those hands out in front of him and use his punch length and his punch radius, and it's going to help him so much when you take some steam off those guys on the bull rush. And when he gets caught with his feet together again, and it's it's been a fairly consistent problem, he gets in trouble when his feet get close together. Feet get close together, the hips rise up. And all of a sudden, your your low leverage becomes a high leverage, and then you get top heavy, and you're easily driven back. That's something he's got to work to overcome because he's better than that. He's better than what we saw the other night. Mm-hmm. Wolf, could it be a case of um, a coach teaching new technique and and Danny trying some new things and and possibly taking a step back to take two steps forward? T- tell me that Mike, that can be the case. <laughs> that, hey, it can definitely be the case with a young guy. I mean, I. The guy that's more confusing to me was was uh, James Daniels. Yeah. Uh, on one of those plays, 
he he actually hopped into a set. And when you hop, your your whole leverage goes up in the air. And if you get caught at that moment, as you're unweighting your your very base, your strength, the thing that locks you into the ground, you can get nailed and driven back. And I couldn't understand. He hopped and he, his feet, he opened up the door. John LeGlou did the same thing. I'm very surprised. You stagger your feet, you punch hard, and you move your hips laterally, making sure that you stay on the same level for the man to your left or the man to your right. That's called never leaving your wingman, making sure that you're one of the solid five and you stay shoulder to shoulder, hip to hip, on relatively the same level. And they were having problems, and again, identification of who your wingman is. I, do I have somebody, I'm punching a guy off to this guy, and oh, wow, that guy's not picking my guy up. Oh, we got problems. Those things got to be communicated and you got to sort them out because the chaos that will ensue if you don't solve this problem will be will manifest itself in Cincinnati, believe you me, let me tell you. So you've got to get this settled. So Wolf, we hit on that. Wolf, you are a, a cup half full guy, three quarters full. And, and you're so positive all the time, but I mean, deep down, can this be fixed? Come on, tell me the truth. <laughs> I, I, I believe it can be fixed. I am that guy. I always believe, Jim. I've never, ever entered a game and said, we don't have a chance. And I've watched this for 20-some years now uh, from the broadcasting on, on whether it's on the sidelines or in the booth. And I still believe that all it takes is the, is the next game to turn it around, the next play. But, you know, it's got to it's gotta happen, and we've got to see it. And one of the things we saw, Chooks is doing fine. All right, Chooks? I'd like to see a little more movement from the run blocking, that sort of thing, run blocking being a separate issue. But right now the pass protection has been problematic for guys when they run the twist game and they get guys in between them. You know, have you ever gotten a peanut or something stuck in your teeth? You know, it's right in between two of them, right? And it and all you're trying to get it out and you go, oh, that thing really bothers you. Well, that's what happens when you run a twist game and a guy gets in between you and the guard. Like if I'm the left tackle and the left guard or, or right tackle, right guard or center guard, whatever, you know, you get a guy in there. You got all kinds of chaos. You've got to be able to stay on the same level. And right now they're not seemingly staying on the same level so they can pass people off. You can't turn when you punch a guy. And I'm sorry, I'm giving a little bit of a, 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 tra a training protocol for pass protection here and I it's a little bit hard to follow but you can't turn you got to move your hips so you bang up next to the guy next to you if you turn and punch him off that guy can get through the gap if you're not strong enough to punch him all the way over so there's some things again that they got to work out they got the people in place these guys can do it I have seen James Daniels manhandle people I've seen Kevin Dotson blow guys off the line of scrimmage. I've seen Kendrick Green, you know, do what he does and in, 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 in pass protection or run blocking and throw people on the ground. I've seen all these guys perform individually at better levels than what we saw as a group uh, the other night there in Jacksonville. So well, go ahead, go ahead, Jeremy. I was just going to say, uh, at left guard, you, you hit a little bit there on Dotson and Kendrick Green, and uh, Green had an opportunity to speak to the media today, and he was very candid in saying, hey, I, I know I didn't play a good game. I've got to get better, and, and talked about how uh, Coach Tomlin, you know, highlighted his his performance uh, on Saturday in, in Jacksonville. What what do you see? I in guarantee you he didn't highlight it. He low-lighted <laughs> it. Low-lighted it. Yeah, that's low probably a what more and Kendrick knows this and, and I've been there I understand that I've been that I have had games like Kendrick I know what it's like brother and he's got to reload revamp and get ready to go because the NFL waits for no one and believe you me Detroit is going to look at that game film and one of the guys they are going to come after is you Kendrick and you got to shut the water off because they will come after you until you show them that you can handle it yeah yeah Jim you were gonna say something there um, I, I think um, it, it has an effect on the quarterback decisions for sure. Uh, you know, uh, if you're going to look at Mason and Mitch, Mitch, Mitch has proven his mobility. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you're going to look at Mason and Kenny, Kenny's got the tick of a second faster processor. I, I, I think that's, I think that's Mason's one flaw mm -hmm. is the, the processing just it isn't, I mean, it isn't what Kenny's is. Uh, and I don't think Mitch's is what Kenny's is, but Mitch has that mobility that 
allows them to feed him to the lions or the wolves or whatever's coming <laughs> after him. In Cincinnati, what's a Bengal wolf? A lion or a, a tiger? Tiger. Yeah. All right. So throw him to the cats. So uh, um, I, I think that definitely disqualifies Mason, no matter how well he's played and how good his stats are. So, Well, as you mentioned, the first two guys, they've probably got a little more athleticism. But again, I go back to Mason, and Mason stays calm and cool, and he does a good job. I like this about Kenny Pickett. He talked about throwing him open. He did something about it. He made an adjustment. The other thing, and I love Kenny did, that touchdown pass, I believe it was to Deontay Johnson. I think it was called back. Mm -hmm. Boy. He, he rolled to his left. He threw across his body, but he tucked his elbow and snapped that baby off. And I'm telling you, that takes athleticism to be able to do what he did there, to snap that throw off while he's moving to his left and do so uh, in, in the way that he did. I was really impressed with Kenny Pickett on that play. His athleticism really showed us what he was capable of doing on that play. And, and if you look, especially at that uh, second pass to Friar move down the middle, mm. the, hit, the hit he took. Yes. Stood in there. Great point. Yeah. He, I don't know if that's something you want to get used to, David Carr. You know, <laughs> no. How many, I mean, that wasn't he the number one pick who took 72 sacks his first year and was never the same? I, yes. I don't know if you want to subject Pickett to that, but wow, he sure can stand in there and take a hit. You yeah. don't want to be a human pinata back there at the quarterback <laughs> position, that's for sure. Well, there were definitely some some bright spots, but still work to do on that offensive line. And let's shift over to the defensive side of the ball. We got to see Larry Ogunjobi out there um, for the first time. You know, he's battling through that injury. So the, the run defense, at least from that first unit, looked a little bit better. Um, Devin Bush came under a lot of criticism the week prior, uh, not recording one tackle, but just really getting caught up in the trash, sticking on blocks. Um, overall takes from the defensive side of the ball from the performance Saturday. You know, I liked Ogan Joby. I was glad he got out there. We needed to see what this powerful dude could do. This guy, like I said, this guy's about two axe handles wide across the, the backside. That's how we uh, fat guys measure ourselves, right? That's your power pack. That gives you the, the strength to go up against whoever's in the trenches against you, you know? And you saw it because he played with a low pad level. He took on the double team. You know, we got to see some of the quickness he's got. He's a good, solid, push-the-pocket type pass rusher. He's one of those guys that you need in there. He's uh, very strong. So hopefully he's going to be able to, you know, that was just the beginning performance. He's going to be able to unpack his, his skill level and talents as we move along. You know, I, I don't know if to say, Devin, there's, you know, you watch him run with running backs and everything else he can coverage. He looks great. And then it just doesn't look like he's reading the play. And I, I don't know what, what kind of is holding him back. We can use, the pre and post knee surgery type of thing and, and reflect on that. But at some point in time, you've got to trust your body to back up what your mind's telling you to do. You got to do it. And, and I think the, the capabilities are all there, but we're, we just have not seen him play to his best football, such as he was doing before the knee injury. Mm -hmm. uh, so that, but I will say this, you know, you, you get to see a guy like, like uh, Mark Robinson, great googly moogly. I'll tell you one thing, this guy, <laughs> This guy has got no fear and he has no, no, he, he doesn't worry about anybody else's safety or his own. I mean, he just throws his body around everywhere. And this kid is, uh, he's interesting to watch. Mm -hmm. he, he sure is, Wolf. Uh, uh, Ogunjobi, Alu Alu, uh, Miles Jack, the run defense is going to be better. And, and yes. I, 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 I hate to say it will minimize Devin. Devin, Devin still gives you some pass coverage, but can they can they eat can they work Robinson in or is he too raw or is it is it sliding Spillane if you were to move Robinson in to some kind of platoon with Devin if you read run pass you know what I mean Wolf right I think one of the interesting things is and we saw this uh, in Jacksonville they played more of that three safety in both nickel Love and it. dime Love you know it. where they 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 come up, uh, up there and. And I got to tell you, DeMonte Casey makes a good argument for being that guy. You know, he had some nice tackles in the box. He had some nice coverage outside the box. Uh, Terrell Edmonds, Terrell is, again, we go over and over this every week. And I laugh with Terrell because we were doing a show. And you know that, Jim, you know, I've told you this before. I tell him, you know, eat that, eat that Omaha steak. Get those big squats on the barbell. Get yourself in the box because you saw him 
come off the edge and weave his way in several occasions where he's making a hit, get filling a gap. I, I love the way, like I said, he is the for, Ferrari of, of hybrids there. Well, is that your rundown, runs down nickel? Uh, well, because it, Does he cover slot receivers? He can, yes. Think about it. All you're doing is giving yourself a big nickel at, in essence. That's what you're doing. You're trying to get the half safety, half linebacker in there. And that's that's what I think Terrell is so good at doing. And that, you know, gives you a little more, you know, uh, run stopping power. Um, but, you know, we'll, we'll see how much they do. They will do. Um, Miles Jack looks terrific. Yeah. You know, yeah. I was funny. I was sitting in the I was riding the bus over to the stadium with him, you know, uh, uh, the first bus, you know, going to the game. And we drove by as we were coming to the stadium, you could see him kind of look. And I was just thinking, you know, it's kind of like you're wistfully looking at some place you used to be, you know, some of the memories that flood over you. And the look on his face was kind of like he was kind of going over some of those memories. And I, I think it had to be a big thrill to go out there and play, you know, and he, he was a, a Mike Tomlin's choice for, for game captain and to go out there and represent the Steelers in front of his former team. And I thought that was a pretty cool move. Yeah. He, Memories, that, yeah. Definitely look explosive there. Anything else uh, from the game you guys want to highlight? Um, I know we're trying to stick to a tight agenda here. I, you know what? Let me throw a, a little, little kudos out to Carlin's Platel. He made that hit on that screen. He got out to that intersection point before that big prairie mammal of an offensive lineman. I don't know who it was came out there to try to tag him and knock him out on a screen. If he doesn't make that play, if he doesn't blow up that screen, that kicker doesn't attempt a 57 yarder. It might be a 30 yarder or a 35 yarder because Car if Carlin's doesn't make that tackle, that dude could still be running. So a little, little kudos to him. He showed it. He showed up at a significant time to make a play. And let's give a little kudos to Jannard Avery. I, kn I know he gave up the, the corner once, and a second time he ran down and, and made up for it. Uh, he also read a screen out there, but he's, he's has some quicks and he, he's not bad against the run. Uh, I don't know. It might be the number three guy they've been looking for. You know, Jim, I think that's very astute of you. You know, Jannard Avery is one of these guys. He's powerful. He's strong. Um, he's got a good, he, he clubbed an offensive tackle the outside, which I thought was really good because I mean, he almost knocked himself down. He swung so hard. But he has good recovery ability, good feet. He not, he's hard to take off his feet. I think you you, you highlighted a guy that uh, could do some real work for the Steelers coming up this year. Yeah. Well, Steelers Nation, all is not lost. There may have been some performances that were below the line, but there's always next week. The glass is half full, and there were some bright spots from the performance on Saturday. They prepare for the Lions this Sunday at 430. They'll be back at Acroshore Stadium. I have to correct myself there. Uh, but Craig, thanks so much for coming on the show. Uh, we enjoy having you here and uh, I learned so much just from this short period of time. So thank you. My pleasure. Thanks for your uh, waiting on me. Uh, you know, as the dental work went <laughs> on, uh, appreciate you guys. And anytime, it's always my pleasure. All right, everybody. Well, thank you so much. Thanks for checking in for episode number 34. We will be back next week following the final preseason game and the roster cut down to 53 takes place on August 30th. So a lot, a lot coming your way, but thanks so much for watching the still city insider podcast. See you everybody.